Thank you so much again for submitting your story, sharing your story with us and um, being here today on the call. So yes, we chose your story. Um, there were, I think, over 35 um, submissions, uh, but we chose your story and here we are talking about it. So as I said um, on the email, I would love to hear more about the foundation, the work that you do and also love to hear about the specific topic that we're talking about, choose to challenge the International Women's Day uh, this year theme, uh, what you have done, all those fun things and meaningful things that you've done. And also, given that I'm talking to two amazing women, <laughs> would love to hear your own story, right? Every woman has their own story and um, that specific stories will be so inspiring to many um, women out there. So yeah, that's our agenda today. Okay, that's awesome. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the honor. It is quite an honor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, my pleasure, uh, really. So I guess if we start from the foundation, uh, the organization story, it will probably segue nicely into your own personal story. So why don't we start there? Okay. Yeah, I, maybe I'll talk about the foundation in general. OK, so yeah, I mean, Kessler Foundation, with the support of our very generous donors, um, we say we're in the business of changing the lives of people with disabilities. So we conduct groundbreaking rehabilitation research. Nancy Chavarlati is, is one of our uh, senior researchers to help people recover from brain, spinal cord injury, stroke, and MS. Basically, we're looking at two aspects of functioning, cognition, the way we think, learn, and remember, and the way we move, mobility. Um, and then we have another aspect of our mission, which is uh, grant making. So we make grants to other nonprofit organizations that are helping people with disabilities gain access to employment. Um, and what we really say here at the foundation is that it's abilities, not disabilities, um, that matter. Um, and we are really striving for an inclusive world. And that focus on inclusivity does filter down to, um, to our staff and to all, many aspects of diversity, including women. So we have, most of our scientists are women. Um, most of our leadership team is, is also uh, comprised of women. So, and, and the foundation also, the culture here um, has a very strong uh, work-life balance, um, you know, impact on people. So it, it does help women advance their careers and um, have families. Right. So, so um, most leadership team and many scientists in the organization are women. So did you have um, specific intention to have more women um, in the talent pool or it happens that way? That's a very interesting question. And um, I, I think it's, we've had a, you know, our, our CFO, which is unusual um, for many, many years um, is, a, is a woman. Um, and I think that, and that's an unusual position um, for a woman to hold, especially for so long. And I think that when you have an organization where there are female leaders, then it naturally grows that way. I mean, Nancy's one of our longest standing employees and she began her career um, at, um, at the foundation too. Okay. So it, it, it ha I think it's naturally grown, but it's also been something we, we value. Right. So I can tell you it is a it has changed over the years. I started in 1999 as a research fellow. So I was completing my training and I came to the foundation to do that. And, you know, I had several grant successes and one thing kind of grew out of another and I loved the work that I was doing. So I chose to stay all these years and I moved into administration. Probably I would say in two, it, my first son was, I, I was pregnant with my first son. So it was probably 2002, maybe 2003. And when I was at administrative meetings, I was one of two women in the room. Oh. So it was very, now it's not like that at all. Now it's at least 50-50 at these administrative meetings, maybe even higher on the female side. Mm -hmm. So it's a very different environment now, and it's wonderful. It was wonderful to see it transition that way. I like to think that I was part of that because I had, you know, started very early in in the in this 
spectrum of change. Um, but I think it's been, you know, I think it's a great way that the foundation has grown over the years. And it's really, it really shows, it demonstrates the attitude that the foundation has toward women in the workplace. The, the effort is to make the workplace work for the woman, not make the woman adapt to the workplace. I mean, obviously there's always, if your career is important to you, you have to adapt. You have to make it work. You have a job and you have to get the job done. That's basically the expectation. So, you know, we want people in the office during certain periods of time, but if you don't work nine to five, if that doesn't work for you, then we figure something else out to make it work around your other responsibilities so that you can have a full life and you can achieve that work-life balance. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, 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 that is really inspiring that um, last over the last 20 years, you were there, Nancy, you saw that big change from just mm -hmm. one to two women to more than half women. That's a big change. And still, um, we see stats um, all the time that not many women are in the leadership roles and in the boardroom, just period. And you've achieved that within that short period of time. So that's amazing. And I do agree that uh, the more women that we have, in the, in the work environment, the more um, flexible we can be with that workplace culture that fit with um, women. Um, and yeah. I think if there's one thing we've learned over the past year in this pandemic, oh, yeah. it's that flexibility is key to success. Like yeah. if, you, if you weren't flexible this past year, you didn't achieve much at all. And I think Kessler Foundation was really pivotal in their ability to adapt to the pandemic, to have people work from home completely at first, and then gradually transition back to the workplace, and then reverse it when we had to, you know, we because the numbers went back up again, and we had to kind of back back down a little bit. And I think that the foundation really serves as a model in how the adaptability has assured that our success was maintained through a very difficult period of time. Right, right. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I think that also part of 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 what makes us successful is that ability and that willingness to work with people to make make those that have them have schedules adapted and be flexible. And then you get the most you get loyalty and you get commitment um, from people and, and you get the ability of people to do their best versus forcing them to, you know, fit into some proscribed formula. You Very people true. can achieve at high levels when you let them, when you let them do, you know, mm -hmm. they have, when they have passion for what they do and you let them do what they also, you know, love their, you know, spend time with their family and take care of their family. So true. And another thing that was inspiring um, when we we're reading your story was scientists, many uh, female women scientists. Because we, even in our tech industry too, same thing, STEM and tech, um, a lot more people working in those fields are men compared to mm -hmm. women. So do you have any um, story around that, how you could have so many talented women in STEM, uh, in, uh, yeah, uh, in the foundation? Well, I think, um, I think first, I think talent, breed, talent breeds talent. So when we recruit, I do think we're very attractive to some of the young talent because we've had success and they see that and they want to be a part of it. So I think, so we do get a nice applicant pool when we recruit for scientists. However, or in addition, I guess is a better way to say it. Um, so I have eight scientists that re report directly to me. Only two of them are men. So that's quite, it's quite a difference. You know, we have a yes. lot of female scientists. We do tend to try to recruit our scientists young. So they many of them come through the postdoctoral fellowship or junior scientist path. And what that means is invariably they get pregnant. And that's when things, that's when they have to grapple with these life decisions. And it's a challenge. It's always a challenge. And it, I just went through this with two of my scientists this year who had babies that are just about a year old. They have the baby and then they're hesitant. They don't want to leave the baby. They don't want to necessarily come back to the workplace. So, and they talk to me and they talk to me very honestly because I have a 17 year old, a 15 year old, and an 11 year old. 
So I've been through this. I worked the whole time. So they know that I'm going to be honest with them. And I think that's key. One is being honest with them about what is going to come down the pike. But the one thing I always say to them is what my husband said to me when I had my first son and I didn't want to go back to work because I didn't want to leave him. He said, do me a favor, go back for three months. If you don't want to work after that, then we'll figure out how to do that. And that's what I say to my fellows or my new junior scientists when they go out on leave. I said, listen, enjoy your leave. It's a wonderful time. It's, enjoy every minute of it. It goes way, way too fast. But make sure you come back even if it's only to, for three months or so. Come back, see how it feels to be back, see how it feels to be away from the baby. And then if you want to stay home after that, then that's your decision. But I want you to feel what it's like because <sighs> what you are is important, independent of the baby that you are about to have. And that's generally yeah. what happens and they generally stay. <laughs> <laughs> I have owned, I have been with the foundation since 2014, so coming on um, seven years. And but I have a 19 year old and an almost 17 year old, and when and it was very difficult going back to work, um, you know, after my leaves, which I did enjoy them, and it was it was heartbreaking, but I also knew that I needed to be. You know, I needed to do what I, I really care about. And, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm a fundraiser. It is a pri pri predominantly female um, field. And I have been blessed with having so, you know, mentors throughout my career to kind of guide me, to guide me and, and you know, build me into, you know, what I have become. And, um, and I'm so glad. And I have two daughters um, that, and, that my daughters can look up to me and see, you know, that I am a supportive mother, they will say most of the time, <laughs> and also successful. And I feel like um, showing them that I can do that. Um, but then I've also been fortunate um, to have employers who have respected that uh, part, that both, both parts of me as a person, and especially here at Kessler mm -hmm. Foundation. Um, so then I think we already talked about uh, what the foundation has been doing for the employees and, and whatnot. Did you have any specific initiative tied to this International Women's Day this year uh, so far, if there was any? We actually focus our efforts on a day that was um, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the international, it's the, it's the UN day, the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Right. And we do a social media campaign and, and um, around that and, and celebrate our female scientists. So, so that, and then when I saw your email, I was like, oh, well, this is, is very similar uh, in the idea of it, but we focused on, on the science side because of, of what we do in our, in our research. So. Right. right. Um, in turn, when you think about your own career, and uh, it's great that you have daughters too, um, what would be, I guess, top three suggestions, recommendations, advice from women in leadership, women in business um, to young generations, young girls? I I think finding mentors and then and then paying it forward and being a mentor um, can really help somebody grow in their career. And a female mentor for a woman, um, I think, is really important. Somebody who is going to understand what it's like to work um, at the top and strive to be, you know, strive in your career, move at the top, uh, you know, of the ladder in an organization. Um, and still raise a family is essential. And then finding an employer um, who who respects that as well. That's that's and something you could do possibly with uh, with your mentor. Right. Yeah, I would also add that it's important to to recognize that it's no longer a male dominated world professionally and females fit in that world, and you don't have to act like or emanate a male to fit in that world. It's okay to be there and still be a woman. There's nothing wrong with that, and it actually fits quite well. So I would, I, I always 
we talk about this a lot. I meet with all of my scientists at least every other week and fellows more often. And we talk a lot about the difference between men and women in science because there is there are just some very basic differences between men and women and the way they approach situations, the way they approach disagreements. And I think it's important to recognize that men will do will approach this differently. You approach it the way you're comfortable approaching it. You don't have to act like someone else or act like a male to be successful. And I, I think that's important for them to maintain comfort in their own skin and the fact that they're female and they're at, at the table. Like that's perfectly acceptable and it's something to be proud of. Yes. Yes. And even, yeah, even um, uh, I, I also, um, uh, in the beginning of my career, had this idea, wrong idea of, okay, I need to act like that CEO, male CEO, if I want to ever um, be a CEO or leadership position, right. there's way to do it, just one way to do it. And that is just not, not the case. Right. And yes, still, I still hear from um, young uh, uh, female professionals that um, I don't feel act this way, but I think I have to act this way. And uh, no, that's not the case. Um, you can be you, you can be authentic you and mm -hmm. still can grow in your career. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, however you want to grow in your career. So, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> it's been You're very, welcome. yeah, inspiring to talk to you and hear your story. It's, uh, I think we can put together a very nice story <laughs> to share with yeah, our um, audience. Again, thank you so much. Thank it was you. So thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Mihai. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. 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 Th